Hello, greetings, Earthlings. I've been wanting to let you know for a while now that I am not of this Earth, so that seemed like the appropriate greeting. Yes, I like to joke around. Truth to every joke, though, right? You got to be careful. Everything I say is simply my opinion. It is simply for the sake of hoping to open up a discussion, have a conversation, learn something. My videos are all made specifically for YouTube, which is an entertainment platform. So I am doing a recap of my live from yesterday that was uh, Tuesday, the 14th of March. And I just have to tell you, it was pretty wild. Um, when I did my review of it, I was like, oh man, I did not say those things. I retract all of my statements from my video yesterday. Um, I mean, really, some things you just can't say, right? I mean, we all know things are there, like the elephant in the room, but you just can't speak it. So, sorry, not sorry. I spoke a lot of it yesterday. Um, spoke my mind, spoke my heart. Maybe there's truth to it. Maybe it's bogus. Um, that's up to you to decide for yourself what you think. Um, you know, we can all only take care of ourselves. Please hit that like and share and subscribe. I do want to say that my video yesterday, I had to edit it and just a few hours after I made it, when I was still editing it, it had over a thousand views. And so when you edit a live, it deletes all of your views, all of your comments, all of your likes, and it already now has another thousand so over a couple thousand views in the first 24 hours which for my video viewing that's really high so i don't know if it got on an algorithm by fluke or people were just like sharing it or what but you know i feel like there's um grounding to what i'm talking about i'm just asking questions i don't know the answers i just have questions and lately, I've been getting a lot of great information from viewing J is for Justice. I don't know if she's the only other channel talking about the um, cerebral matter on top of the uh, dumpster outside of the frat house, but apparently it was an intact cerebral matter, and it was small. I don't know how small. Um, but it w appeared to be from an animal, which is a huge relief because, you know, the only alternative would be unthinkable. Anyway, let me do my cliff notes here. Um, I am curious about this whole seatbelt infraction that Koberger had on August 21st of 2022. So why is the Pullman PD not clearing the air if they had not hired him for that assistantship that was to have started on August 22nd? So I believe it was the Moscow PD that pulled him over for the seatbelt infraction. It might have been the sheriff, actually, like the, um, the county sheriff there. And, you know, there's been a lot of trolls on my channel and other channels, uh, a high incidence. And that means that you're freaking some people out, maybe getting close to some truth. I don't know. Um, but they are determined to get you off track. So that's what they come out for. I also have been having a ton of um, IT issues. So it could be connected, those two things. It maybe is not. I don't know. But I'm working on it. Um, Dana Squirrely Burger, Dana aka Squirrely Burger, was my uh, super smart viewer who recommended speeding up the one video or slowing down the other video if you're trying to compare those two videos that are in the community post and they're also in the description of the live from yesterday. I don't want to spend too much time on that because it gets really confusing. But basically, it's just a voice comparison. So one of them, the person, the man is speaking really slow. So that one you would speed up to 1.25 and then leave the other one as is. Or leave that one as is and, and um, 
slow down the regular um, the regular content of that creator to 0.75 to do your comparison I think is um, going to give you more accuracy I have so much suspicion as you know if you're not new to my channel and if you are new welcome um, I have so much suspicion about this um, Brent Kopaka Brent Lee Kopaka the Purple Heart Army vet who was um, basically uh, swatted on December 15th and you know there's been no outrage from army veterans groups or his friends his family nothing like that it's very highly suspicious that raises a major red flag for me um the sergeant from wazoo that had the kill shot was not a very well-paid sergeant in the year of 2021 that's the last year that was on record for um the annual salaries for all of the staff there at Wazoo most of those sergeants are making six figures he was one of the only ones that didn't and he made far far less but I'm thinking maybe he was just a part-time officer that year because it was less than thirty thousand um, dollars and like I said the full-time sergeants make six figures there they're extremely well paid one of the highest that I've heard of really um, and you know I was just digging through their records and that's what I found so I don't know if it's accurate that's what I found online but the police chief at Wazoo is that same police chief Gary Jenkins who interviewed Kopaka back in April of 2022 April 12th I think it was the the interview for the assistantship that they say they have no record of the outcome of whether that was offered to the criminal defendant or not and unless they destroyed the evidence they would have record one way or the other that makes no sense at all um and keep in mind that wazoo is the police department that had the massive um scandal of inappropriate lewd and lascivious acts and um and worse and that that sergeant matthew kurt had only resigned from his position November 1st of 2022 but he had gotten his entire command staff resigned a few months earlier which is when Chief Jenkins came in to save the day right um let's see what else do I have here that I want to impress upon you um just to keep your healthy skepticism you know don't trust anyone including me don't trust anyone at face value in person or especially on YouTube right there are always going to be optics at play and it's very easy for the public to get manipulated by what we see in um, movies and television so there was a movie made a couple of days ago called the Idaho Red Rums and it was on the investigative discovery channel which I found very disappointing because I like that channel and this movie was all about um, how the criminal defendant did it so it was pretty much the judge and the jury right there on television whoa um, and you know it's easy to make a person look bad if you're trying it's easy to make a person look good if you're trying a couple of actors that I sort of knew um, you know I was acquainted with when I lived in Malibu California are two really good examples Carol O'Connor who played Archie Bunker and was one of the kindest most gentle generous people you can imagine Carol O'Connor not like his character <laughs> and then there was Michael Landon who was pretty much the opposite he played Mr. Super Wonderful on Little House on the Prairie being the most perfect father in the world and in real life he was an absolute party raging animal and he was like complete train wreck and uh, literally like all of us school kids would see him speeding down the freaking freeway every morning before eight 
90 miles an hour coming back from Los Angeles. Like, dude, what are you doing in Los Angeles all night? I don't know. But anyway, and his hair was always all cray cray. He was a train wreck, like I said. But he played Mr. Wonderful on television. And still to this day, people believe that Michael Landon is this very well-spoken gentleman. And that Carol O'Connor is this total racist, sexist, homophobic jerk, Archie Bunker. And that's not who he is. That was a character on television. Same with the dad from Little House on the Prairie. So just be careful. Like, don't buy into this stuff, you guys. Crime and Crochet or My Hyper Focus is a channel that I love. She's also one of my mods. She did another video about a week ago about the Sammy Smith interview, and she just did such a great job kind of stopping it every few seconds and giving her impression. So it's the same interview that she did the um, Unicorn Sammy video. If you haven't seen that, I highly recommend it. And she just hit her 100 subs that she was looking for, so now she can do lives, which is super exciting. So shout out to Crime and Crochet. Can't wait to be in one of her lives. Um, Looking at the potential connection with Brent Lee Kopaka and the Idaho Four, remember the inside looking, um, what was that? Inside looking profile on Facebook and the ICU2 post that Kopaka made on Facebook. So the inside looking was made to look like it was probably Koberger, but I'm pretty sure it was a fake. The ICU-2 seems that it was a post that Kopaka had put up um, months ago, like maybe in the summer. And he spelled C-S-E-A. It's very curious, but um, just very curious how similar the... Um, is it inside looking and ICU-2? Yeah. The fact that um, the criminal defendant used that word exonerated, he's looking forward to being exonerated. We spoke about that in the chat and how um, being exonerated is being proven innocent after you're convicted, not before. So you have to be convicted before you can be exonerated. And my concern with this case is that the fix is in. The fix was in a long time ago. I am concerned that there could be a railroading going on. I'm certainly not looking to defend a criminal. I'm looking to make sure that that's the truth. So that's my concern. Um, it's not appropriate for law enforcement to have a four hour response time to a quadruple homicide, you guys. Of course, there was an officer who arrived much faster than that, but the lead detective had a four-hour response time, and his supervisor, who was accompanying him, the two of them, had a four-hour response time. And the lack of outrage from law enforcement towards the two roommates for taking eight hours to call for summoning first responders at first, they decided to summon their friends or whatever. That's nuts. That's completely insane. And there's no way that real law enforcement would be chill about that. Okay? You have 12 hours right there, obliterated, where all of the evidence is disintegrated for 12 hours. You are never going to be able to determine a time of death with any accuracy whatsoever after 12 hours. So um, pinning this onto a person, first you have to nail down a time frame. So they've nailed down this time frame of 404 to 420 from the time that this criminal defendant allegedly was in his car before he got out and then back in his car speeding away. It seems like a pretty tight time frame for one person to do all of that when they don't know this uh, residence very well. And there's a big step between the kitchen and the living room. That could really throw you for a loop. But I'm curious if things happened way before that and the DoorDash delivery and the TikTok and all these 
timestamps are just there to try to confirm a time frame, an arbitrary time frame. So, um, yeah, the fact that Corporal Brett Payne is the one who took the call that came in a day or two later after the father had dropped his son off at the Sigma Chi frat house and saw that small intact brain on top of the dumpster. The fact that Brent Payne took that call when he was the lead detective on a quadruple homicide two days in, that's weird. I would think that there would be other officers that could be screening those calls and directing them to him if needed. But who am I to judge, right? Um, let's see. That five-hour time gap, uh, 9 p.m. to 1.45 a.m. for Xana and Ethan, still has me concerned. It took a long time before Bethany said that she saw them at Sigma Chi, and therefore they were at Sigma Chi for those five hours. I think that's a strange alibi and a strange way of coming around to it, especially when Bethany and Dylan were both said to have been out in the community at different events, not together, but those events and where they were are not being shared. There is a lot going on with this case, with this blue sky reality making a phone call to 911 because there was a murder of crows around the residence of 1122. And he found it uh, logical to call 911. Weird, really weird. So um, while I was trying to do my video yesterday, my cat moved my curtain and the light just came flooding in. That's why I wanted to edit and take that uh, that unplanned light flood out. Um, but it cracked me up too because, you know, I do make a lot of uh, Wizard of Oz references and it just reminded me of, you know, don't look behind the curtain, right? I'm going to say peace out, you guys. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching and take care of yourself. Eat well, stay healthy, get your exercise, get your rest, be kind and be productive. Always be kind. Always demand kindness. It is, I think, one of the most important things that we can do for ourselves and for others. So like I said, peace out. Sending you light and love. See you on the next one. Thanks for watching.